Hey graphic art students, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to complete your digital abstract color painting that I just posted in Google Classroom. So to begin working on this project, you're of course going to read all the instructions and then you're going to follow along in this step-by-step -step, step instructional tutorial. First thing we're going to do after you've read your instructions is we're going to open the Photopea website. We're going to click new project and we're going to name that project. And this is how you're going to name it. It's going to be your name, abstract painting, All right? Your next step is to choose the size of your canvas for your document. You can choose whatever size you want for this project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the photo presets. I would like to work in five by seven this time, but I would like to work with the landscape orientation to sort of make that happen. I'm just going to switch the measurements by clicking this button to make my width seven inches and my height five inches. And then I'm going to hit create. All right, so I've got my canvas here and my new document named with my name. So the next thing I want to do is I would like to move my picture up here so you can see what I'm doing. And then I am going to create a new layer. Just like we talked about in class before we all got stuck in our houses, we never wanna work on the background layer in Photoshop. We always wanna create a new layer. This helps keep your work kind of separated so you can go back and edit. It also helps keep it organized, all right? So today for this project, we're going to be using the shape tool to create a design. So I'm gonna show you where that's located. The shape tool is located right here on your toolbar on the left hand side. It currently says a rectangle because that's the default shape that is there when you start using this tool. When you right click, however, on the shape tool, it opens a little window that lets you change the size of the shape that you want to use. For the first part of this activity, we're going to be using the line tool. So we're going to go ahead and click that and that's going to change our shape tool to the shape of a line. When you click on the shape tool, the toolbar up at the top of your screen changes with settings that allow you to adjust how that tool works. So we're going to make some adjustments to our line tool. The first adjustment we're going to make is located right here. It's a little drop down menu that says shape. So we're going to click on that and we're going to select pixels. This is going to allow us to create lines all on one layer. The next thing we want to look at for these settings is over here, and that is width. This is going to affect how wide or how thin your line is. For the purposes of this assignment, I think that 5px, which stands for pixels, is a good size for your line to be. If you want to make it wider, you would make this number bigger. If you want to make your line thinner, you would make this number shorter. I suggest starting at 5, though, and seeing how it looks and adjust as it appears on your screen. The next thing I want to show you is when we create a line with this line tool, it's going to be a color and that color is determined by what is in this small box at the bottom of your toolbar. For the purposes of this lesson, we would like to work with the color black. So we're gonna click on this. It's gonna open our color picker window and we're going to pick the color black either by looking right over here on the preset swatches. We have a black right here we can click or you can simply come over here and drag this around until it goes all the way to the corner and you can choose your black that way. You then hit OK and it will change the window down here to the color that you've just picked. All right, so we're making sure that we're working on our first layer and we're going to start using the line tool by clicking and dragging across the screen. It's going to show you a little preview of what that line looks like. As we draw our lines, I want you to make sure that you are drawing them all the way across your artboard from one side to the other. So you're gonna click and drag and let go, and then you'll see your line. You need to do seven lines minimum, but you can do more if you want. So I need to add six more lines to my artboard. So I'm gonna do that now. So 
if you're having a problem with your lines disappearing like that, you can just hit Control Z. It should make them reappear. If you have a problem where you draw a line and it disappears on you for some reason, I'm not quite sure why that's happening, but it did happen to me too. And to fix it, I just deleted the layer that I was working on and made a new one. And when I started drawing the lines again, it seemed to work. So I've got one, two, three, four, or five lines. I'm gonna draw two more going in this direction. And that should be good. Again, you need seven lines minimum. You can do more if you want, but you need at least seven. So that's how we use the line tool to create lines on our canvas. Next, we're going to change our shape tool to the ellipse tool by right clicking back where our shape tool is located and selecting ellipse, which is another way of saying circle. So we're gonna be making circles with this tool. We need to go up to our settings toolbar and make a couple of adjustments before we can use this tool to make circles. And I'm gonna show you what to do. First of all, Instead of switching it to pixels, we're actually gonna keep it as a shape. We're gonna go ahead and draw our first circle and then make some more adjustments. So I'm gonna click and drag and that's going to just allow me to create a circle. The longer I drag, the bigger it gets. If you hold down your shift button, it will lock it to be a perfect circle. If you let go of the shift button, you'll be allowed to adjust it to be more of an oval shape. Once you're happy with the way that your circle looks, you're gonna let go and you'll have a circle. So it's automatically filling with the color red because when you look over on your toolbar where it says fill, you can see that red is selected. So right now we're gonna make a couple of changes to the way this circle looks. First, we're going to switch the fill to this box with a red X. And what that's going to do, actually, I'm sorry, we're not going to change it to the red X we're gonna change the color. Right now, the color for the fill is red, and we wanna change this to white. Right down here, there's already a bunch of colors that you can just quick pick from, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick the white. And that's gonna change the inside of that circle we just made to white. The next thing we're going to change is the stroke right here with this little box with the red X. We're gonna click on that, and we're gonna select red because that's a color, it's a solid color. But instead of making it red, because right now what's happening is the line that goes around the circle is red. And I want that line to be black to match the other lines that we drew. So I'm going to go over here, locate the black box, click that, and that's going to change our line to black. All right. So now when you look at your circle, it's going to have a white inside and a black line around the outside. Every circle you make from now on will have the same settings. So you only need to do that for the first one. You'll also notice that when you draw your circle, it creates a new shape. This is what happens when you change this from pixel to shape. It creates a new layer for every shape that you make. You need to have five circles minimum for your design. So I'm gonna go ahead and add four more circles now. You can definitely add more if you'd like. Practice making circles in different sizes. You can even make them go off the paper. All right, let me see, where's a one more good spot? Let's do one right here. All right, so we have five circles and we have seven lines. And this is the line work for our painting. The next step is to color this, but we need to make a few more adjustments. So right now, to color this, we need to combine all of these lines together into one layer. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let me move my picture over here. So we're gonna look at our layer window now, and we're going to click on our first layer, layer one, and we're going to hold down the shift button. While we're holding down the shift button, we're gonna click on our last layer, which is this shape five, that was the last shape that we made, and we're gonna click that as well. And what that's going to do is that's going to select all of the layers in between those two layers. So I have layer one, shape one, shape two, shape three, shape four, and shape five all selected. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on those selected layers. A menu should pop up that looks just like this and I'm going to select merge layers. 
And that is going to merge all of those lines and all of those shapes together onto one layer. It says shape five as the layer name because that was just the top layer that was on that list. So it combined them all into that layer. If you click your eyeball now, you'll see that these lines all disappear and reappear at the same time. So they're now all at one layer. So we're almost done. The last step is to add color. And we're going to be using the paint bucket tool to add color for this assignment. You're gonna find the paint bucket tool on your toolbar over here, located at about the middle. It defaults to the gradient tool, but if you right click, you'll find the paint bucket right underneath. And you're gonna go ahead and click that, All right? Now, we can start using the paint bucket tool to fill in color on our canvas. And you're going to be using a color scheme. Whatever color scheme you choose, you're gonna be using all of the colors associated with that color scheme. All right, so we've got our paint bucket tool selected. I'm going to be using the warm color scheme today, which means I'm gonna be using red, orange, and yellow for my colors. So I'm gonna start by using red, and I'm gonna click down here to open my color picker and I'm gonna pick a red. I'm just gonna go right here to this very nice bright red and hit okay. And with my paint tool or my paint bucket tool, I'm just gonna start clicking inside the areas that I want to paint with this color. And you'll see that they fill up inside of those lines that we created. What I'd like to do is I'd like to avoid painting two different areas that touch each other with the same color. So this area touches the area that I just painted. So I think I wanna try and make that a different color. So I'm gonna keep looking for areas that don't touch to fill in with this color. I'll do that one. And I think that's about it. If I do any other ones, they're gonna to be touching one of the other layers that could be already red. So I'm gonna go ahead and change colors. Now I'm gonna choose an orange because that's the next color in my warm color scheme. Okay, so I'm going to start filling in some more areas with my new color. All right, that looks pretty good. Again, I don't see any areas that I could fill in that are not already touching an area that already has orange. So I'm going to go ahead and change my color again. And now I'm going to choose yellow because that's the last color in my color scheme. Okay. Start filling in those colors. All right, let's see. All right, so I don't have any other squares or areas that I could fill in that aren't already touching that yellow color. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my red and I'm gonna choose a lighter shade of red because it's still a different color even though it's still considered red and it still fits in the color scheme because it's red. And now I'm gonna start filling in those leftover squares. All right. And it looks like I need one more color. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I'm gonna choose that orange and I'm gonna choose a lighter shade of that orange and hit okay. And I'm just gonna do that last square in that lighter shade of orange. And it's finished. So this is what you're going to be doing for your own project. You're choosing your color scheme, you're creating your own design using lines and circles, and you're coloring it all in. Something I forgot to mention is that when you use the shape tool to create your circle and you let it go, something you might notice if you zoom in is that there is a blue line that goes around your shape. This is nothing you need to worry about. It's just what happens when you create a shape with the shape tool using the setting up here that says shape. This blue line will go away once you click on a different layer. So right now I've clicked on this layer where I've made this shape. I'm going to click on the background and that blue line is going to go away. So that won't be in your final project. So if you see that blue line, don't worry about it. It will disappear. It's just kind of a guideline to make sure you know which shape you're currently working on. So once you have completed your painting, I'm going to show you how to turn it in. So we want to go ahead and go to File, Save as PSD, and that's going to download this to your computer. 
And then I also want you to export as a JPEG. This is going to make another file saved to your computer just as a JPEG file, which is just a little bit easier for most computers to open. It's a smaller file, and it's just sometimes for a lot of people, it's the easiest kind of file to download. So I just want to make sure you have a copy of both of these types of files, and then you can decide which one works best for you. Okay, so when you save as a JPEG, it just opens an extra window just so you can adjust any of the settings. It's fine as it is, so you can just go ahead and save. And that will download another copy of that JPEG file to your device. Now we want to turn it in, and I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to go back to where you can view this assignment in Google Classroom, just like we looked at before. And you're going to look at this window right here that says your work, add or create. And this is where you're going to upload that file that you just saved. So you're going to click here. And then you're going to, if you're using a Chromebook, you can go ahead and click on Google Drive, which is where everything should be saving on your Chromebook because that's how Chromebooks work. If you're using a regular computer, you would click on File to upload that file from your computer. So you're selecting from your device. And I've got my painting right here that I just created, and I'm going to click Open. And then I'm going to click Upload. It takes a few seconds, but soon you'll see a little preview and you'll see the file named as your name, abstract painting. And then once you are all set, you're going to go ahead and click turn in. It'll give you a little pop up just asking if everything looks OK. And then you're going to confirm and then click turn in again. All right, and that's it. You have just finished your work. Great job. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment on this assignment. If you need help using this program, I definitely recommend setting up an office hour meeting with you where we can video chat and you can share your screen with me and I can help walk you through any problems you might be having with this assignment or using this program. Have fun.